So this is The Girl Who Stole an Elephant and it's chapter two. After going home for a quick change of clothes, Chaya hastened toward the edge of the village to see her friend Neil. She picked her way through the paddy fields, turning back from time to time to check if she was being followed. Ahead of her was a carpenter's workshop where Neil worked, and beyond it, its high-waisted walls, she could see him bent over his work. Hey, Neil, she said, stepping into the smell of wood chips and polish. Neil looked up and smiled, and then bent down again to the square of teak that he was working on. Stacks of wood leaned against the walls, and half-finished furniture was strewn all over the place. You're back early, Chaya. I thought you'd be at the feast for longer. Chaya slipped onto a stool next to him. I, I had to leave a bit suddenly. You should have come, though. The feast was amazing. She peered over the half walls. The surrounding area was deserted as usual and only a soft breeze swept through the paddy, rustling the underside of the thatch roof. We've got so many orders to finish, Master didn't want me to go. Neil worked his chisel into the wood and brown shavings fell at his feet. Chaya wondered what was happening at the royal palace at that moment. She'd lost him, but would they give up? Surely they continue to look for her. Are you all right? asked Neil. Me? Yeah, of course. She stared at the square piece of wood he was working on. That looks different. All geometric patterns instead of the swirly designs you usually do. Oh, this is something we're making for one of those foreign merchants. There's a new spice merchant in town and it looks like he's here for good. Their patterns are all like this. I had to use a ruler. Try his own doubt as Neil talked. How long, long would the king's men look for her? They wouldn't give up easily. A head snapped back at a thwacking noise but it was only a crow hopping along the top of one of the walls. Okay, Chaya, what's wrong? Neil put down the chisel and stared at her. What do you mean? You're all jumpy, what's happened? You're not gonna like it. Tell me anyway. It's the usual, Neil sighed. Oh, what's it for this time? Oh, it's BJ, one of the boys down at the river. He was attacked by a crocodile when he was swimming. I was there when it happened. Yes, you told me. What can you do for him now, though? Neil blew on a piece of wood, puffing out a cloud of brown dust into the air. Chaya rubbed her nose. His family have been told of a medicine man that can fix him, and he might be able to walk again. But they need a lot of money very quickly. They've got to hire a cart for the three-day journey, and then there's a payment for months of treatment, of course. Neil shook his head. I don't know if I should admire you or think you are completely mad. Mm, this time you might be right to say mad. Why? What's different? Like I said, they need a lot of money. I might have taken something more valuable than usual. Neil stared at her. Which is Chaya undid the pouch and the jewels spilled out. They clattered onto the intricate carving Neil was working on, lodging in various grooves. The, sam the sapphire shot shone at the brightest of blues, but a sparkling pink ruby was a close second, with a silvery star shimmering inside it. Neil shrank back as if he'd been stung. Chaya, what on earth? Where did she get them from? She picked up the sapphire and she held it to the light the queen's bedside table. Neil looked at the jewels and back at Chaya. Please tell me you are joking. That's not so bad. Chaya put the sapphire back with the other jewels. Neil was always such a worrier. He seemed to make things much worse than they were. I don't think they recognise me. Wait a minute, someone saw you. Calm down, Neil. I ran away, I'm safe. Calm down. This isn't like stealing a few coins here and there. This is the king we are talking about. Queen, actually. Neil glared at her so quickly, she carried on. Oh, don't you want VJ to get better? If he's not treated, he'll lose his leg. He'll never walk again. And anyway, there's someone else who could use some of it too. Who? You! Me! Your parents could have the money and you don't have to work. You're 13, Neil. You should come back to school. I have told you enough times. I am fine. I don't need any charity. Oh, just hear me out. It's not just school. You could even learn Sanskrit and the sciences at the temple. You could have a better life. A better life? 
or your life, do you mean? Try to throw up her hands. Fine, right, so I've gone a bit too far, stealing from the Queen. She noticed Neil's expression. Okay, a lot too far. But I had to find a lot of money right away while they can still treat VJ. She gathered the jewels up into her pouch. I need to get these to his family. They leave tonight. Wait, Chaya, think. How is a poor farmer going to sell the Queen's jewels? And what happened? You said someone saw you. She hoisted the pouch back over her neck. It was just one of the guards. He chased me down to the promenade and other people tried to get me too. It got a bit manic, but I got away. So now they're looking for you. Well, yes, maybe. Oh, there's just no need to look so horrified. I'll give VJ's mother one piece that she can sell on the journey far away from here. I'm going to hide the rest at home. Oh, the King's men are probably searching the villages right now. Don't go anywhere with those things on you. We need to hide them at once. Hide them here. Chaya's eyes swept around the room. High shelves lined the far wall of the workshop filled with tools, pots of polish and wooden trinkets. Everything's so open. Oh, oh, what about that box? The one you made the other day? The one you showed me? The one with the hidden compartment? Have you still got it? Yes, um, it's here somewhere. Neil went to the shelves and he hunted through them. He brought down a small carved box with a two-headed bird carrying a snake in its claws. He opened the lid and he lifted out a drawer and after some fiddling about, unlocked a secret compartment at the bottom of the box. Chaya emptied the jewels inside first taking out a tiny cat's eye pendant and leaving it to one side. Scooping up some wood dust swept into a pile in the corner, she packed it in tightly with the jewels. Neil snapped everything shut and put the, bo put the box back on the shelf amongst a few others. It'll be all right, he said, as if guessing what she was thinking. The master takes these every three months to Gale and he's only just been so they're safe. Good. This'll blow over soon and then I can get back. I can get them back then. Taya hoped this was true. She unpicked a few stitches in the hem of her skirt and she pushed the cat's eye pendant in. I'll give this to VJ's mother now. Fine, but go home straight after. I'll head to the city and see what the talk is. You'll be safe once you're home. Your father. Neil stopped, looking troubled. What? What about father? Oh, Chaya. If they ever find out that you took the jewels, your father will be in big trouble. But father's only a minor official to the king. Why would they blame him? But even as she said it, realisation slowly dawned. He's the village headman. He knows the palace. Layout, access, that kind of thing. They'll think he set it up. They'll never believe a girl did this on her own. And you know what the king's like in a rage. He'll have your father. Neil's eyes darted away from Chaya. Oh, come on. You need to go home now. Chaya followed Neil out with a backwards glance at the box on the shelf. The queen's pendant brushed her ankle through her hem. Father. She accidentally put him in danger. Neil's unfinished sentence couldn't have been any clearer to her. And that's the end of chapter two.